Yep. Morning. Can I start? Uh? Oh, you want to wait? Oh, wait, wait again. I think we may start now. Okay. Uh. Let me share my slide. Uh. Okay, good morning, everybody. My name is... Uh, the line is not so good. Uh. Yeah. Good morning, everybody. My name is uh, Dr. Tan, Tan Kok Lim from Business School. Today, I'm going to present with, uh, let me show the... Today, I'm going to present two of my paper. The first paper is a factor influencing the consumer purchase intention in e-commerce. And later, I'm going to present another paper. The name is Impact of Macroeconomic and Bank Specific Factor on the Liquidity of Commercial Bank in Malaysia. Okay, let me start the first one. Ma. Basically, uh, you can see uh, in Malaysia, especially, uh, uh, you can see the statistic based on the status, uh, Department of Statistics, uh, number of uh, online shoppers in Malaysia is increasing. So you can see the figure here from 2016 to 2021. Uh, I foresee that the number of uh, shoppers were going to increase. So from you can see the figure here. Let's say we talk about 2016. Huh? 2016 basically is a 0 0.88 million. But if let's say uh, we talk about 2021, 2021 will increase to 2.2 million. Then they expect by end of 2022, the numbers will increase to 2.53 million accordingly. So what's the problem statement here? The problem statement basically we talk about uh, consumer hesitation to purchase, which raised from various problems. The first one, uh, basically, I think everybody knows is a shipping, a uh, high shipping cost. The second problem is a time of delivery and product delivery take too long. The third one is a uh, uh, product return. The sometimes you buy the product, you're not satisfied, so you're going to return. Among these are among the problem that normally faced by shopper. Okay. Therefore, for better understanding of purchase intention, it's essential for effective e-commerce usage. Therefore, to know the customer towards C to C, customer to customer commerce, commerce, and to understand the customer behavior to improve the company business. Therefore, from here. I come up with the literature review. So the basically the model here, what we're going to use for this particular case is a TRA model. We call theory of reason action. So you can see the diagram. Basically, uh, this is a basic decoding of effect of external factor on internal belief, attitude, and also intention to purchase the information system. So these are the model we're going to use for this study. And I come up with uh, one independent variable, which is purchase intention, followed by four independent variables, which work to mount perceived trust, e-service quality, and return policy. So you look at the first, uh, first uh, dependent variable, which is purchase intention. Basically, according to this uh, Mirabi, it said purchase intention refers to the type of decision that discover of the factor to purchase a brand by the customer. That's called you intend to purchase, but before that, you need to understand the brand first. Okay, then purchase intention is very likely to link to consumer behavior, perception, and attitude. This, this is talking about the purchase intention. So the first, the independent variable is word to mouth. Word to mouth is very important, meaning uh, according to this uh, uh, Embry and Buys 2012, it said word to mouth is an act as a vital role for consumer perception to a particular brand name. Therefore, uh, consumer rely on online consumer uh, review regarding the product or services before they proceed to purchase intention. The second independent variable is a perceived trust here. Perceived trust, I think, is important. Why I say so? Because according to this uh, Aziz, uh, Aziz uh, Muhammad Hussein, he, he defined trust as a belief that the counterparty will meet the expectation without exploring the vulnerability of the trustee. Therefore, the trust is very important. I trust you means 
I you are able to sell to me, I'll buy. That that's that's uh there's no question on it. Therefore, a feeling of security and unwillingness to depend on someone or something. Okay. The next independent variable is e-service quality. Okay, e-service quality, we talk about service is very important, especially if you purchase online. So this e-service basically refer to the degree of a website facility, effective and efficient, efficient purchasing. Okay, and then it comprises of four dimensions. The first one is website design, customer service, uh, privacy, or security, and fulfillment. These are the very important e-service quality. Without these four elements involved, I think it's a, it's a difficult, okay? The last, last independent world is a return policy. Sometimes when you buy books, sometimes you are not satisfied what, what is your requirement, you return it, right? So the return policy can define as a uh, ability or return manage, management of a that psychology be, uh, benefit for solving consumer remove such as security awareness. Okay, uh, so in addition, uh, some researchers say it's a link to the level of consumer loyalty and increase consumer confidence to the stock. This according to this uh, Ohazi uh, lah. So from this uh, one dependent variable and four independent variable, I come up with a theoretical framework here. The theoretical framework, the dependent variable is consumer uh, consumer purchase intention, and the four independent variable, independent variable electronic word to mouth, perceived trust, e-service quality, and return policy. Okay, with this, I come up with four hypotheses here. The first hypothesis is uh, electronic of mouth. Uh, the second hypothesis is perceived trust. The third one is e-service quality and return policy, all these are positive related to purchase intention, okay? These are the four hypotheses that come up. And chapter three, I'm going to look at the methodology here. So for this particular study, I a survey on all the citizens of Malaysia regarding gender, age, race, religion. And the size here I collected is 250. And the sampling method and collection method is, uh, I use a judgment method, it apply, and the respondents must be have experience in purchase e-commerce, that means purchase online. And the method here, I'm using questionnaire. Questionnaire is a data collection method. And the questionnaire, I use five, leak, five point Likert scale, that means one to five. One means what? Strongly disagree, and five means strongly agree. The four research finding. So basically, from here, uh, after I run the SPSS, so the test come up with, with it. For validity analysis finding, the ballot test uh, of uh, specificity uh, value at uh, 3157987, and the result showed is significant. That means 0 0.00, which is less than 0 0.05. The second test I do is a reliability test analysis to finding, you can see all the numbers, the Combra Alpha, all the figure is above seven. Above seven means what? The minimum uh, Alpha Alpha they require 0 0.7. That means all the number here, all the item here is abandoned. None of the item is abandoned, okay? Can be used. Next one, the uh, finding uh, the analysis finding is correlation analysis finding. You can see the number here. The Pearson correlation is used to grade a co correlation value. The results show that the highest of the correlation is 0 0.73, and the lowest is uh, the lowest is 0 0.59. Therefore, for this case to show that the the word amount is very important compared to the perceived uh, trust which is 0 0.5 and 5.95. Next one I'm going to look through is the regression analysis finding. You can see the number here, the result of 0 0.613, which means 61.3% of the factor consumer purchase intention is relate to this four independent variable, which is electronic amount, uh, word of mouth, perceived uh, trust, E, 
service quality and return policy. To me, I feel this 0 0.613 is considered reasonably uh, okay because uh, uh, normally, if let's say you get a figure zero point below 0 0.5, that means it's not so so influencing. But for this case, 0 0.613 is okay because uh, it's above 50 percent. Okay, then the uh, Dubin Watson is 1.550 is acceptable because the range is normally for Dubin Watson. They say the range when you get, you must get 1.5 to 2.5. But in this case, my result is 1.5, but it's in between. Therefore, in this case, it's no autocorrelation. So from the result, you can see uh, there are four hypotheses, and I say this all hypotheses are postulated, but the result show only one hypothesis is accepted. That means which is 0 0.00, the p-value. The rest are all rejected. The three rejected and one accepted. Chapter number five. Discussion and conclusion. Okay, a uh, discussion of result here. I'm going to do the uh, impact of work of mouth, impact of perceived uh, trust, impact of e service quality, and impact of return policy on purchase intention. Okay, the first one you can see is a positively related. What does it mean here? That means it's important the role of the consumer perception because the uh, customer purchase online. That's how work to mouth, right? It's very important. That's why I say when the result test is positive, it's, reject, it's accepted. Okay, so it to ensure that whether the product is good impression to others or not. By reading the consumer purchase review, it makes consumer feel confident to purchase certain product. That means for this case, I say it's accepted. The second one, the second this time you see is rejected. Rejected means no relationship, no relationship between a uh, perceived trust and uh, purchase intention. So basically here, I'm saying, why is it negative? Because of customer is not trust e-commerce because of some default cases or sometimes your return your problem. You take too long, that kind of thing. So therefore, you come up, the result is uh, it's not accepted. The third one also not accepted because of e-service quality and consumer, the relationship between e-service quality and consumer purchase here. Yeah. So product information is not sufficient because sometimes I want this product, I want this kind of uh, what they call detail, I want that kind of detail. But sometimes on, on online itself, you cannot review everything. Therefore, for this case here, it's not accepted. So the feature of the website might influence the customer purchase intention. So e-commerce not provide the tailor-made example. Sometimes, especially we talk about clothing, uh, I want this size. I want this cutting, that cutting. So in, in what they call e-service quality, normally they don't go and specify so detailed. Therefore, it's not accepted. The last one intention, the impact on the return policy on, on purchase, also not accepted. The reason is because of uh, the return policy charge an unreasonable cost and it is convenient to return the product. Sometimes when you buy the product, maybe the product is not so expensive. So when you return, that means you need to pay, pay some, what I call example, courier service charge or this and that. Lah. So you add up, seriously, it's not so worth that. Therefore, in this case, it's not accepted, okay? And in conclusion, uh, except, uh, that's how I say, there are four independent rebel, only one in the independent rebel accepted. That's work to mouth, right? That, then the rest are not accepted. So a merchant and marketer should pay more attention to encourage consumers to leave a review on the product. That's basically, I say, you buy on physical is better than you go online. It depends on kind of product, okay? The merchant should improve the security of the website in order to protect consumer privacy and avoid fake seller. So this is talking about the trust, okay? Uh, so talking about the privacy, okay? The next one is seller should ensure that the information of the product is sufficient and clear. If let's say you, you, you advertise a product that is not clear and not sufficient, personally I view that is very difficult to sell. Because I'm a consumer, basically I want to know the product, I need to know in details. Before I purchase, definitely I want to know everything in detail. Okay, therefore, the, the next one is the merchant should explain the return policy clearly and avoid misunderstanding. Therefore, I think it's good to, to, to spell out 
in case you don't satisfy with the product, how are you going to return? How much roughly you're going to pay that kind of thing? So, so it's very important to our consumers. Okay? But lastly, the merchant and e-commerce platform should consider the result in order to influence the customer, uh, customer intention to purchase. Okay? So this basically is my presentation. Any question? Any Q&A, please? Anybody want to ask any question? Anyone? Anyone want to ask question? Hello. Miss Penny? Sharin? Any question? No. Huh? Okay, if no, uh, I'm going to present another paper. Which another of my paper? Uh, let me share the paper with you. Huh? Okay. This paper we talk about impact of macroeconomic and bank specific factor on the liquidity of commercial bank in Malaysia. So for this particular case, I'm going to look at the impact on macro and also bank specific factor and how these two factors can affect the liquidity of commercial bank in Malaysia. Okay, uh, for introduction, basically I'm going to look at what does it mean the word liquidity here? Let me... Liquidity basically, we talk about the bank capability to obtain the reserve requirement to meet a short-term obligation when maturity to prevent loss. So what does it mean here is the bank need to make sure they have money. Liquidity talking of money. If let's say example, the customer come and deposit, deposit. Then when the customer can withdraw, the bank cannot tell, say, oh, uh, uh, can you come in tomorrow? Uh, or come, can you come in next week? Uh? You cannot do so because this is a customer's money. Therefore, in a bank, they have to make sure they have liquidity to make sure when the customer come and withdraw, make sure the bank have the money to pay. Okay. So according to this uh, basic committee for bank supervision, Explain liquidity is essential for bank daily routine operation to meet short-term operation. Again, same with the first definition. They have to make sure the bank must have a liquidity, enough liquidity when the customer go and uh, come and withdraw. Or when, let's say sometimes the bank also take another loan, make sure the bank have sufficient cash to pay. Okay, so for this particular case here, So for this particular case here, according to this uh, Ragasami, uh, they use the loan to deposit as a measurement of the liquidity. Okay. This particular uh, Ragasami, they use, there are many methods uh, to, use, to measure bank liquidity, but one of the methods they use is a loan to deposit. Okay. And you can see the figure here, there are two, two uh, crises. Uh. The first crisis is in 1997, financial crisis. The second one is subprime crisis in 2008. So from here, you see, because of these two crises, I think everybody knows that before the crisis, Malaysia, we have total of 54 domestic bank, commercial bank. But because of the crisis, Bank Nagara tried to consolidate. So you look at the figure here. From 1980, uh, we have 54 commercial bank, 54 domestic commercial bank here in good finance company, in good commercial bank. And number of foreign bank, we have 12. Then because of the crisis in, in, in Kerr, let's say you talk about 2008. Therefore, bank now say we, they must liquid, they must combine, they must merge or they must uh, consolidate. Therefore, you can see today we have only eight local banks. Eight local bank and we have 18 foreign banks. And as I mentioned to you here, basically this particular one, the measurement liquidity, they are using loan to deficit ratio. Therefore, they take total loan of the bank, divide by the line is not so good. Huh? So 
So you can see here, the, the loan deposit ratio means they take total loan divided by total deposit times 100%. What does it mean by the high LDR here? High LDR means two things. First thing, they issue more deposit in form of interest bearing. That means they take the deposit and give up loan, give up loan and get the interest. The second one is to generate. The moment they give more loan, that means they generate more income. That's talking about when the, the ratio is high. If the ratio is low, what does it mean the word ratio low? means the bank is a low risk. Of course, the bank low risk. Because why? Because they, the bank don't give up so much loan. Therefore, the risk is low. Okay. And the problem statement here, basically, I just do a very quick summary here. The first one, the problem statement of the liquidity come from the crisis. The crisis, we, as, as we know, we have 2007 with the financial crisis and 2010 is a subprime. During that time, a lot of uh, uh, what they call uh, foreign investor uh, and lender sold off their asset and refused to renew. Meaning refused to renew, the bank had to come out a lot of cash. Therefore, at that time, they are running short of cash. This one of the problem statement. The second problem statement is the, the bank could not immediately liquidate the long-term maturity asset. What does it mean here? Let's say, example, the customer come and take housing loan. You cannot say force the customer to pay all the housing loan in one time, right? Therefore, but you are taking deposit. Deposit is a short term. Normally, the customer come and place deposit in one year, two years, that kind of thing. After that, they liquidate. But for in terms of loan, they are very long period. Especially we talk about housing loan, we talk about personal loan, we talk about term loan. That is a very long time. Therefore, it cannot match. Therefore, again, it come up with a liquidity problem. Okay. The next next issue here is talking about low capitalization. When the bank have low capitalization, what does it mean here? Uh, relate to low capital, react a moral hazard. Moral hazard means something like the the what we call the the customer. Let's say, example, the customer come and get a loan. Uh, uh, the customer will tell you, I need this loan for business, that kind of thing. But in actual, it's not. The, maybe the customer use the loan, take the loan and go and pay a loan, example. So, so this, this creates, uh, if let's say the bank has low capital and yet they give loan to this type of customer, then eventually the customer cannot pay. Again, this is a problem of the bank. The problem has a liquidity, right? The last one is talking about large bank tend to engage more risky activity to grow the asset. Example, why I say uh, too big to fail, meaning so example, let's say we talk about Maybank, CMB. Normally, I think our government, our government, uh, our bank in Malaysia will not let these two banks fail. Why I say so? Because they are too established. But because of this, the bank say, oh, I'm too big. Therefore, I give up more loan. The moment you give up more loan, if let's say the economy is bad, then in this case, the let's say the, the those loan cannot pay, those loans are very big, big amount. But in another way, that bank Naga will not let these two banks fail. Therefore, bank Naga have to come in and help these two banks. Therefore, I say a large bank also gets a problem in case that is the economy is not good. Okay. So the result of the fear basically, I'm going to look at two areas. The first area I'm looking at the impact of bank specific. Bank specific here, I'm talking about three very important items. Bank capital, bank size, and bank leverage. These are talking about impact of bank specific. That is controlled by the bank itself. The second item, I'm going to look at the impact of macroeconomy. Macroeconomy here, we are talking about three very important elements. Inflation, foreign exchange rate, and government deficit. Therefore, I split into bank specific and macroeconomy. So what is so important? I, start, I use this case to study. The first one, the first one is the central bank perform is more. Of course, when central bank they they want to make sure that every bank uh, maintain enough liquidity, there are some kind of policy lah. That one I'm not going to explain in detail. Uh, therefore, it is very important for the central bank to monitor. Each bank make sure they have sufficient liquidity. There are some some what you call a mechanism that bank are imposed on commercial bank. That one I'm not going to detail. The second one to ensure a fulfillment of uh to re, to to prevent that bank panic. If let's say each bank they have to maintain certain percentage of liquidity in the bank, 
The purpose is in case the big customer come and withdraw, the bank has the spare amount, spare amount to pay the customer. Therefore, under the bank uh, rules, say each bank need to make a, make, make this certain percentage of the reserve in order to prevent the bank panic. The third one is the uh, this one will help the manager. By looking at the liquidity, it can help the manager to making decision to overcome financial crisis and determine the future plan of assets and liability. And lastly, is the the liquidity reserve can cushion can control against the unexpected crisis. Okay, we talk about we look at the liquidity review here. These are the liquidity review I found out. Uh, bank liquidity, uh, uh, capital capital here. I'm referring to capital FC. Bank size. These are the three. Uh, the line is not so good, huh? Okay. These are the 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 bank specific. These are the three item under bank specific. And the other one is under bank, uh, what they call macroeconomy. Macroeconomy here, I'm talking about. Just now, sorry, uh, just now the, the capital adequacy, bank size, leverage, this one I'm referring to a bank specific. This is controlled by the bank. And action rate, inflation rate, government deficit financing, these are under macro. Therefore, for this particular study, I'm going to look at two areas. One is bank specific, one is macro. Okay. So there are two theory I'm look at here. The first theory is bank liquidity. Under the bank liquidity theory, under diamond is a very old model, and they, they, they say a uh, depositor, depositor example is depositor or investor lah, are reluctant to take risk and not sure about the timing of the future consumption requirement. This according to this are uh, bank, uh, this are uh, diamond lah. They say uh, normally for especially those initial investor. Or do depositor, they dare to take, they dare not take risk. Therefore, uh, they prefer to have to, to use their money in what we call easy to liquid. Therefore, they prefer to consume earlier, will receive low payout because of early consumption required premature of long term investment. So, this is one of the theory. Another theory we talk about is a liquidity premium theory. Liquidity premium theory, basically, according to this, uh, Matt Gallup said. Liquidity payment is an extra, extra return demand demanded by the investor as a compensation for investment in long term debt. Therefore, you can see here why I say normally I say low risk, low return, high risk, high return. Because of the, if let's say investment is a long term, definitely the risk is high. Therefore, I expect a uh, higher return. That's talking about the, the liquidity payment. Therefore, I say high liquid and short term. A uh, security can be so easily. Therefore, I say security, they are short term, long term. For short term one, you can sell easily. Let's say I buy a commercial paper only one year. I buy a bond five years. So I need to wait until five years. If let's say I buy a commercial paper one year, it's fast. I can mostly liquidate. Later, if let's say I want to renew again, then I decide. Okay. I don't know what happened. Huh? Therefore, I come out with the framework here. The framework here basically I say uh, bank specific, these three, and bank mac uh, macroeconomic, there are three. Therefore, I come up with the equation. Uh. Okay, the hypothesis that come out here is uh, six hypotheses. First one, bank is negative, bank capital has negative impact, and bank size have positive impact, bank uh, leverage have negative, uh, inflation have positive. Uh, foreign exchange rate have positive and government financing, deficit financing have positive relation with bank liquidity. So the methodology here, I'm using a uh, panel data and the data I collected is for 12 years. That means from 2009 until 2020. And the data method, very, very I don't know what happened to this line. Eh? And the the panel here, the, sorry, the collection method I'm using annual report. Bank annual report to collect the data for a bank specific, and I will use World Bank data to collect for macro. 
Okay, so therefore there are two two types of uh, what they call method collection. I'm saying bank annual report I use uh, to measure the bank's budget, and World Bank I use to use for macro uh, macroeconomic data. And the population here, as you look at the very beginning, I said Malaysia we have a total we have twenty seven commercial bank. Uh. We have domestic and foreign bank. We combine with total twenty four. But 27. But in this case, yeah, I cannot get 27. I only can get eight local bank data and also for foreign bank out of uh, uh, how many? 19, I only can get 10 banks. Huh? Because it's very difficult to talk about foreign bank, it's very difficult to extract the data for 12 years. Therefore, for this particular case, I take only eight banks, eight domestic, and 10 banks. I cannot take the total 27 banks. Okay? Then the period I choose is from 2009 to 2020. And basically, I'm going to test this particular panel regression test. I use three methods. The first method I use BPLM. They call it Bruce Pagan LM test. This particular one is test whether which model is suitable. The model here, I'm talking about pool RS model and also random effect model. Okay. The other method I test is called Hoffman test. Hoffman test is to test whether it's fixed effect model better or random effect model better. The third one I test probability test. Probability test basically test whether it's POLS better or fixed, fixed effect model better. Therefore, I'm using these three particular uh, model to test for this particular study which model is better. And beside the testing of the panel, I also do some diagnosis checking. Diagnosis checking, I want to check whether the data, the availability of the data is valid or not valid. The first one, I use a multi correlation multi here. Once the correlation between two independent variables, independent variable here, I'm talking about maybe I talk about bank size and talk about bank capital, or maybe I talk bank capital and leverage, that kind of thing. These two correlation, if found more than 80%, then it's suspect, suspect correlation. Okay. Another one I test is on the diagnostic checking, I test on the heteroscarcity here. Heteroscarcity basically is to, to, to prove, to measure the deposit, whether present is modern or not. If the p-value, sorry, huh? Uh, the line is very bad. If the p-value for this particular case is lower than 5% significant, indicate that it's a historic scarcity. Therefore, I use HO and H1. HO is a homogeneous scarcity and H1 is a historic scarcity. Therefore, if the decision, if the p-value is higher than 0 0.05, that is, that the, they did not reject the HO. Then, in this case, they'll take H1, okay? Then the last, Last uh, checking I do is the autocollation. Autocollation, same thing here. I'm going to type an uh, error term in the correlator in one another result on the specific error here. So I'm looking, same thing, I'm looking at the p-value. If the p-value is found to be greater than significant level with 0.05 or 5%, indicate that autocollation does not exist. Therefore, again, I use HO and H1 to test it. The decision is if the p-value is greater than significant 0.05 or 5%, the study did not reject HO. Okay. Therefore, the economy model here, uh, just as I mentioned earlier, I use liquidity as the function. Those are independent and dependent variable function for this particular model. Okay, I use a car size, a, a, a leverage, inflation, foreign exchange, government deficit. Okay, these are the model I use it. Okay, so you can see here the model. How do I define the model here? Let's say example. I talk about LDR, right? LDR means loan deficit ratio. How to measure? I measure loan divided by deficit. That's you need to define first lah, before people read at the your 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 what you call your your thesis. People know that oh, you measure liquidity based on what? Based on loan loan to deficit. Then capital, I use tier one and tier two, capital divided by the risk weighted asset. This is the way how to calculate okay, the bank capital. 
There are many ways, but this is the actual way that the bank used to measure. Okay, then bank side normally they use total assets. Huh? Then leverage they use total asset divided by tier one capital. The rest also the same. Huh? That's how it define. You need to define how you calculate because there are many ways to calculate each of the uh, variable. But this, therefore, I say for each of the decisions, you need to define very clearly that people know how you get the, the statistic or how you get the data or how you calculate the data. So from the finding, you see the, the finding here, and this is a finding here. First, I'm using descriptive statistics. So you can see the descriptive statistics here. Basically, this is a, a, a big word, but it doesn't matter. You look at the skillness. Okay, if you look at the skillness. Skewness here, you can see all are positive, right? Except one negative, right? Except GDF, government deficit financing. So it means what? It means the variable are positive scale to the right, except one only, GDF, scale to the right. That's how I do the descriptive analysis, okay? Then you see the multi-correlation. Multi-correlation, you can see here under this table, I speak into for domestic bank and foreign bank. So for domestic bank and foreign bank, you can see the figure as shown in table two and three. Huh? Uh, no, we notice that the result correlation of each pair is low, very low. Uh, the highest 0 .0 0 0.63, and so uh, the highest for foreign bank is 0 0.60, and domestic bank is 0 0.8. So this conclude there's no multi correlation for this particular case. Okay. Next one, I'm talking about heteroscasticity. I use the web test. How, the, how to interpret the result is you see, I talked about 5%, 5% significant level. If the value is lower than 5%, uh, there's no scarcity. Therefore, I said I'm using this particular one uh, for foreign bank and this, this particular data, I get it from my thesis. Lah. This is, I didn't show it, but the result is here lah, for. For greater than 5.5, that means there's no heteroscasticity. Okay. The last one, I use the autocorrelation. Autocorrelation, I use a wide, wide risk test statistic. Again, I say use 5%. So as a result shown, again, I say this in my thesis, I, I, I did, I did uh, run out the figure. So here, you can see the foreign bank is uh, 0.765, and the local bank is a uh, domestic bank is 0 0.3810. Therefore, it's higher than 5%. That's again, there's no autocorrelation. Okay, for choose the model here, basically I said, this now I run the test. I want to choose which model is the best. Therefore, you can see the figure here. The result for F test basically talk about polybility, Hausman test, and also. Yeah. There are three tests I'm going to do. Correct. First one is the, just now I say probability is under this uh, test, Hosman and also uh, BPRM, three tests. So you can see the figure 0, 1, 0, 1. So what does it mean here? Okay. You see here, basically the result here, you can show, you, you go back to the, just now the table, huh? basically you can see here uh, the effect model that the alternative of this uh, fixed effect model is more than Polybility, which is zero, ma. Since the result shown zero, that means this, in this case here, I say FEM is better. Fit effect model is better for first test, ah, polybility test. Second test, I use the Hausman test. Hausman test to test whether is FEM better or REM better. Just now the polybility test, I test whether POS better or fixed effect model better. So this confirm that FEM better, right? But after that, I do a second test. I do a Hosman test. Hosman test basically I test the FEM and REM. I want to see, sorry, I have the ballet edit. REM, this should be REM. This one should be REM, this one should be FEM. Okay. I test it. Oh, I confirm that the properties T square show 1.00. Just now you see from the diagram, so it's higher than 0 0.05. Therefore, to confirm this particular test, Hosman test, I choose REM. Therefore, here I cannot. Don't know which model to choose. Therefore, I need to do another test called a BBLM test. So BBLM test basically the test what? Test polybility and REM. If they want to see which one is better, so the alternative here, the H1 for REM is more than 
B over F, which is zero. Seeing the result shown is zero, it means that REM is better. So from here, you can see the first probability test, I say pitch effect model better. Second one, I test hospital, I say REM better, random effect better, random effect model better. The third one, DPLM, I say, oh, random effect better. Therefore, in con to conclude this, basically I say REM is better. Why I say REM better? Because you do the Hotman test and DPLM test, they confirm REM is better. Whereas the PULIB test, there's no REM involved, but they say fit. So we compare the two better to one. Therefore, overall, the results shown that the BPRM and Hotman test confirm that REM is better. Therefore, in this particular model, I'll choose REM. Okay. And the discussion of the finding here, you can see mostly they are quite, quite, uh, quite close up. That means you talk about expected sign and also your domestic bank and foreign bank. Therefore, you can see negative, negative, negative. These are all the results that can prove that here. The, uh, the regression model, domestic and foreign bank are shown in table five, this particular one. Uh, using panel data analysis, the result review that bank size, uh, leverage, financial uh, crisis, exchange rate are determined of domestic bank. Right. And for bank size, leverage, government deficit financing, financial crisis are main determined of a foreign bank. Therefore, you can see uh, significant or not significant. It's significant, that means it's important. Okay. And to conclude this particular uh, presentation, the first one we can see from overall, the result shown that inflation, government deficit financing, asset size are positive and insignificant in explain to bank liquidity. Another one, you look at the, the table, it show car ratio, leverage show a negative and significant relation with bank liquidity. While Foreign exchange rate shown a positive and significant relationship as all findings are consistent with the past researcher. You see, I, I list out all the past researcher. These are all the researcher done with quite concern to my result. Okay. And the major implication for this particular one is expected to happen in future. If let's say financial crisis come again, this particular one will happen. The financial crisis happen, that means the liquidity will come in again. The problem come in again. Therefore, this particular case is uh, in, 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 unable the bank to make decision. The man, bank had to make decision first because they already gone through two cycles. So more or less they know what they expect in case, in case this particular uh, crisis happen again, another crisis happen again. Therefore, the bank need to take back precaution. Okay. So the next one I'm talking about limitation. This is the limitation. Huh? The data limitation here means that any report prior to 2019 are not accessible. A lot of, especially those foreign banks, you cannot get the data. Because I don't know, even you get the data, the data is also not complete. Therefore, it's a limitation for this particular study. Okay, talk about the future. The future, I suggest that to cover factor that were not tested yet. That's why I say I test only three variables of bank specific. I test three variables of this uh, Marco. Therefore, I think in future you can add in more. Add in more variables. Therefore, you, when you add in more, the, it suggests that the, the cover the white more cross section and also longer period. Of course, maybe you do another five years time, then you can collect data for another five years. Instead of now, I collect only 12 years, so you can collect up to 17 years, example. Therefore, the result might come out a different again. That's basically my conclusion for this particular presentation. Any question? Can I have a question, please? Can I have a question? Azim, any question? Azim? Not for me. Thank you, man. How about? Miss Penny, Miss Penny, any question? No, oh, very good. Okay, uh, how about Shalin? Shalin, any question to ask me? No, oh, very good. So if no, I can I conclude this uh, 
through presentation. And uh, if you have any question, you can just email me. I'll answer you accordingly. If not, then I think I will stop here. Uh, wish everybody a nice weekend. Enjoy your weekend later. Okay. Yeah. Can I shut down the system now?